Hey there. In this video lesson, we are going to conclude our discussion of normalization by looking at the negative consequences of not normalizing inadequately. And so we call those uh, consequences uh, update anomalies. And uh, the easiest way to understand these anomalies is to work through some examples. So I have two problematic relations listed here. Uh, employee department relation and employee project relation. They're problematic for different reasons. So as a review of normalization, we should look at the reasons that these table plans are problematic. So employee department, potentially fishy because we've got, you know, a relation name that's overloaded with multiple concepts, although sometimes that's perfectly fine when we are basically representing a relationship from our entity relationship diagram in the relation. Keep in mind, relationship is the diamond in the entity relationship diagram. It represents a relationship between two or more entities or one or more entities. Um, that is not to be confused with a relation, which is basically, uh, well, it comes from set theory, uh, a relation in our uh, parlance is the same as a table. It's a plan for a table. So in any case, let's look at this employee department relation. So primary key is social security number. And we're just assuming that first normal form is not a problem. SSN is the PK. So do we have any issues with second normal form? We, we can't because the primary key is not concatenated. It is not Composite doesn't consist of multiple attributes, so not an issue. But what about third normal form? Well, third normal form has to do with transitive dependencies. And if we look at employee department, we can see that social security number functionally determines department number, right? A given employee can have identified by an SSN can have at most one department number affiliated with him or her. However, the department number then in turn functionally determines department name and department manager SSN. So what do we have here? We have transitive FD and therefore we have third normal form. Nope. We top off at second normal form here. Okay. And here in employee project, we have a different normalization difficulty. Here we have a concatenated primary key, social security number and project number. And so warning, warning bells should be going off for second normal form violations. And indeed, we have project location and project name that are functionally dependent only on project number. And we've got employee name which is functionally dependent only on social security number. So as soon as we have non-key attributes that are dependent on only part of the concatenated primary key, we have no second normal form and therefore we top off at one and F here. Okay, so they're setting the stage, there's the problems. Now let's erase all of that stuff and get back to get back to just these relations. So we can see some of the problems that would exist. All right. So when it comes to update anomalies, we have three kinds. Uh, we have insert anomaly, delete anomaly, and update, as in actually updating information. So let's look at an example of each. So here we have no th third normal form. When it comes to insert anomalies, let's uh, imagine the following. We have a new department we've created, reasonable enough, and we wanna get the information about that department into the database. It's a new department, so nobody's been assigned to work on it yet. Well, tell me, what's the problem with trying to get a new department into this employee department table. Well, the department information is going to be this portion, right? 
primary key is social security number or employee ID number, a department with no employees has no possible way of being assigned a meaningful social security number. So basically the insert anomaly here is we can't get department related information in until we have an at least one employee signed to work in that department. That is not good. So there's an insert anomaly. What about a deletion anomaly? Well, deletion anomaly, pretty much the same thing, only in reverse. Um, when we delete the last employee from this table, we will also, or when, let's say, when we delete the last employee who works for a department, say, uh, a, a department is getting downsized temporarily, but we still want to keep all the information about the department because we plan to staff it again when the organization starts doing better. Well, when you delete the last employee from that department, you have also necessarily deleted all of the information about the department. Okay? So that's a deletion update. And then a an insertion update or rather an update anomaly, pardon me, is uh, not quite as severe, but is still can create some data integrity problems, which we certainly, certainly want to avoid as much as possible. So, and we can also see some of the uncontrolled redundancy that uh, inadequately normal normalized relations can create. So imagine we have a realistic uh, table, employee department table, with you know large departments whatever our big department is operations having you know hundreds or thousands of individual employees with unique ssn's in it so for a single department we could have you know 10,000 well 10,000 is a lot but 10, say 10,000 uh, employee records for each of those 10,000 times we've repeated the the department number which is not so bad that's unique to eat you know that that that's 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 okay, but then all of the information that is driven directly by department number, department name, department manager SSN, department location, department, there could be tons of information about a given department that is, that is repeated hundreds or thousands of times for each of the employees for that department. So that uncontrolled redundancy is problematic, and we've discussed that before. The update anomaly comes from the potential to change, you know, say the the manager of the department has changed, which I mean that happens all the time. That means that you need to change that information, not one and only one place, which would be the ideal. That would be excellent, but rather every stinking time that you find it, which is every single solitary social security number of every employee in the entire database. If you don't get all of those instances, then all of a sudden you have some records reflecting one department manager and some other records reflecting another department manager. You don't know which one's right. You don't know which one's wrong. That is a nightmare. That is to be avoided. That is an example of an update anomaly. Now let's look at some of them with the, uh, the, the, so the, the second normal form, the uh, violation, the employee project relation. So here we have social security number and a project number directly both of them determine hours. So there's certainly no problem there, but only SSN determining ename and only project number determining this one and this one. Okay. Love my messy handwriting. Let's get rid of that. Um, so insertion anomaly, we've got a new employee and we can't get him or her in until he or she has logged some hours on a particular project because we want to put, uh, you know, Jane Smith in. Uh, she has a social security number or, you know, uh, more realistically, a employee ID number, but we don't yet have any project that, uh, uh, that, that she's worked on. So we can't insert just an employee. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we can't insert just a just a new project 
because to insert a project, we need an SSN. And so you need both of those pairings. So, and, and just exactly the opposite in deletion. Um, we can't get, um, because SSN and project number are both in there, we can't get a given individual out without deleting information about the hours logged on that individual's projects and that is too tightly tied up. So that that's the, an example of the difficulty here. Plus, you know, if we stored all of the information about employees, not just employee name, but address and, and phone number and contact information and gender and birthday and all that sort of stuff, again, we would have the problem of every time we have a new entry, a new primary key SSN and project number. So every time an employee works on a new project, we needlessly have to replicate the employee number. And every and, and so that's a lot of information repeated, you know, several times over, but more worrisome is the information related to projects, which also could be potentially a, a lot of different attributes, who knows, that has to be repeated for each and every employee that works on the project. So that's needless and it, it can create those update anomalies. The ideal situation and a readily achievable situation using appropriate either entity relationship diagram and translation techniques or normalization techniques is to assure that updates need to happen one and only one place that is desirable, that is achievable, that is not going to happen, however, unless you have reached at least third normal form. Uh, and so there you have it. A quick informal example of the sort of updating anomalies or, that can be created if you have problematic table or relation decomposition. That's relatively uh, straightforward. I definitely will feel comfortable calling upon you to provide examples of these anomalies in a testing situation. So let me know if you have any questions. Study hard and uh, I'll see you online.